LA County is considering returning Manhattan Beach property that was taken from a black family almost a hundred years ago. KFI's Corbin Carson brings us the story of a black family stripped of its legacy. This is something that's been haunting my family for the last hundred years. Anthony Bruce is the great, great, great grandson of Willa and Charles Bruce who bought Bruce Beach in 1912. For my family, this would mean the world because it has devastated and destroyed not only my family, the other families that were there and African-American communities as a whole. Family spokesman Dwayne Shepard says the family put up a resort so black people had a place to enjoy the waves. Charles Bruce worked on the railroad, so he was gone quite a bit of the time. So here you have a community of whites, you know, attacking and terrorizing a black woman who's merely just trying to make a living, provide a place of leisure for the other people of color in the surrounding community. The Ku Klux Klan moved in and they had 24 hour drinks. Uh, they burned mattresses under the porch. They burned a cross there. They slashed tires. They put in a sign that people could not get in the water in front of the property. This is waterfront property. He says his family and several other families who were being attacked still refused to leave. Then the police department put up 10 minute parking signs at a beach, 10 minute parking signs. And when that didn't work, then the Manhattan Beach City Council decided to come in in collusion with the Ku Klux Klan and the police department and take that property in eminent domain. They took the property as, under the guise that we're gonna make it a park. They didn't put anything there for 30 years until some bright bulb in the city said, I think we better put something here because these people can come back and sue to get it back. So they finally put a park there in 1957. Shepard is also a distant cousin of the family and has lived in South LA for decades. He says, then there's the money. She was $1,200. By the time they decided to take that land from them in 1927, it was worth $35,000 per lot. So that was seventy thousand dollars, and then they wanted uh, fifty thousand dollars in damages. They were only awarded fourteen thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars. Those lots now are worth thirty-five million dollars each. That's seventy million dollars just for the property. Supervisor Janice Hahn says LA County owns the land now, which currently has a county lifeguard training center on it. Can you imagine how wealthy the Bruce family would be if they had continued to be? property owners of a beachfront hotel in Manhattan Beach to this day. Uh, Willa and Charles, as well as all their descendants, would have been millionaires. She says the county's looking at several options to correct the wrong. If we decide to transfer that property back to the Bruce family, we will need to involve the state of California in some legislation that allows for that. When the state gave us the property, we were told we could not uh, sell it, transfer it, or in any way use it for anything other than uh, something of, of public benefit. So to transfer the property back to the family would take state legislation. But Han says that shouldn't be a problem because state legislators are already looking at Bruce Beach. The other options I've looked at are maybe creating sort of a, a ground lease agreement with the family so that maybe for the next 99 years, we pay market value rent to the family and we keep the lifeguard administration building there. And there's always an option of financial restitution where we get an outside entity to look at the present value of that property. She says either way, it's a wrong that she'd like to see LA County involved in making right. And 2020 showed that's long overdue. With the reckoning that this uh, country is its racist past. Bruce now lives in Florida. He says it's amazing to think how determined Willa Bruce was 100 years ago trying to set up black owned businesses during segregation. She had the KKK coming after her and the Manhattan City Beach and the police and all these things. But the main thing was she stayed strong during that time. You see, this was a very strong African-American woman and she did not, not give up any bit of that fight. And it took them actually banishing her and my family from that city to actually get her, you know, under threat, okay, under threat of death because they're, you know, they were obviously making good on their threats. And if they say, we're gonna kill you if you don't get out of town, then you gotta get out of town. But he says it's even more personal than that. I wanna try and put you in my shoes and give you the experience, okay? My life has been ruined. I haven't received any legacy from my family. There's been generational wealth that's been taken from us. You know, you have to remember, when we are a victim of a hate crime, you're pretty much like beat down to the point of almost death. I mean, when Charles and Willa lost it, they lost everything. Eventually, she lost her mind. Uh, Charles, I think he was a cripple. And so the wealth of our family was stripped of us oh, in yeah. my life.
I, I walked to work just today, you know. So my thing is like, yes, we have definitely been devastated by this. If they were trying to get rid of us, they did a very excellent job. Manhattan Beach says next week, the city council will discuss staff recommendations from a Bruce Beach task force on how to address the city's role and what happened with the property. Corbin Carson, KFI News. Incredible. Incredible. Like, it's incredible. Incredible. That story is amazing. I can't wait to hear uh, what happens next week. But the fact that they're even addressing it now to me is is wonderful. But a hundred years later, I mean, I guess better late than never, but man, just a tragic story.